It's not going to be good. It's not, yes, it's not going to be good. <laughs> Gentlemen, we'll move on to. Association Rocketry. So I come down here and give you a little introduction to NAR Contest Rocketry. So what is NAR Contest Rocketry? Well, it consists of meets hosted at the local, regional, and national level um, by NAR members everywhere, all over the country. Um, and it follows the United States Model Rocketry um, Sporting Code. Um, now, who is model? Or who is our contest rocketry? Any member over the age of seven can enter. So I think that includes everyone here, except maybe Ed. Um, <laughs> <I'm> tool. <laughs> uh, and anyone over the age of twenty-one can host a contest. And these contests are hosted both by individual members of the NAR and by NAR sections. So NAR competition answers three basic questions: How high? How long? And how pretty? And these basic questions are uh, answered by altitude events, duration events, and scale events. Um, I just want to thank you actually while I'm looking at this, Chris Taylor, who takes all these wonderful pictures of NAR contest events. Um, so, but in answering these questions, we have uh, we have to remember this is NAR model rocketry competition. So, must be a NAR model rocket, and that is less than kilogram and a half, less than 125 grams of propellant, and less than a G motor to, uh, single engine impulse or an inch total, um, and it falls in our model rocketry safety code. And the English conversions are? Oh, you must. 3.3 pounds, uh, 5 ounces, um, and 37 pound seconds. Okay, thank you very much. He asked for English. Um, and it must use a certified model rocket engine. So that's any model rocket engine that is uh, cross-certified by the National Association of Rocketry, Tripoli, or the Canadian Association of Rocketry. Um, and it must be approved by the NAR Standards and Testing Board as contest approved. Now, that's a little bit complicated, so all you need to know is you come to the list of rocket motors, come over here to contest approved, and it'll either say yes or no, 
can do. So if it says yes, he can use it. And that is most all model rocket motors with a couple of exceptions. I'd go all the way down to a D to find an exception. So. And where do we find that list? That list can be found on the National Association of Rocket Trees website, r.org, under the Rocket Engines tab. I'm going to keep doing this, by the way. Oh, please do. Because <laughs> I've been doing, I, you know, you might have been doing this for too long, but I've been doing it for too long, too. Um, now, NAR competition consists of 37 different events. And that's in 10 impulse classes, all the way from an 8th A motor, which you can see a little 8th A helicopter there, you can see compared to the size of George's hands. Pretty sure that's George's. All the way up to G, and that is a G Super Rock, and it goes all the way from down here, almost all the way to the top of the, the picture. How big is that rod? Uh, is that I can't even 13 see it. And a half feet. 14 feet, yeah. Yeah, it's a 14 foot long rocket. So, but uh, yeah, so, you know, our competition goes from really, really little all the way up to pretty big. You can get a lot done in that kilogram and a half. Um, and NAR contest meets are held on uh, one to three days uh, with a minimum of three people. So you and two friends can get together and do this as much as you want. And they host two to six events. <laughs> Um, now, most of our events are, the smaller events are going to be just a single day, but you guys get together on a picnic and go fly some rockets, but uh, our regional meets are usually held over a weekend, so usually at most two days, though you can technically hold as many as three days. So let's go back to answering those questions. So we want to know how high you're going, and that kind of constitutes your altitude events. Um, Traditionally, altitude events are measured with optical trackers. Would you see one of those at the right there? Um, now, it takes a lot of geometry, and a lot of math to figure out how to work one of those things. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. No, it's not that bad. But uh, you need two of them, and basically the way it works is if you draw two lines in space, like, uh, like so, you can get the point in space where they intersect. That's how these optical trackers work. Now, more recently, say in the past 10 years or so, uh, electronic devices, thanks to the whole thing in your pocket for the most part, um, have been getting smaller and cheaper. And so that's allowed us to switch to also being able to use electronic altimeters. Um, I have an example here is a perfect flight peanut and a uh, micro peanut by Altus Metro. But uh, either way you measure it, an altitude, go for broke, best single flight wins. Now, um, the other question we ask is how long? So, uh, now, these events are held one of two ways. You can have a standard duration event or a multi-round event. Either way, it's the sum of your flights. Um, but in a standard duration event, um, you get two flights. You can go in the air as long as you want. We've had some rather epic flights before for some of our glider pilots, over half an hour in some cases. Um, but you must get one model back and take it back to the range head to say that you've actually qualified in the event. Now, multi-round events kind of give you the same requirement, but in a different way. It's a sum total of three flights but you're only allowed to enter two models. So you must get one back, and there's a maximum duration for each flight. So you must, uh, to, to score the highest in the event, you have to fly three flights, and you have to hit that maximum duration. Any ties at the end of the day are decided by a fly-off. And then the finally, how pretty. So. Uh, these are answered by our scale events, and here you can see uh, the narrow the national meet scale room. Um, on the right there you have uh, sports scale models, on the left there you have classic models, which are uh, designed to be a replica of an old uh, mass-produced kit. But um, in any case, for these scale type events, uh, points are awarded for uh, basically how much your model looks like the real thing, 
how good it looks. Uh, and then finally, how good it looks flying. Um, but the, the general idea is the highest point total wins. Um, So the next question you might think, think about asking yourself is, oh, this looks like a lot of fun, so how do I get involved? Um, you're going to want to find a contest uh, near you. And to do that, you can look at the uh, NAR webpage uh, and go to the Find a Launch, and they have a specific list just for contest launches. So let's take a look at that. is true to some degree. We have hosted uh, events in Canada before. Wow. So, NAR is truly an international organization. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, now it doesn't work. Okay, there we go. So right now, now we're kind of in the off season for competition since it's about 30 degrees out here right now. Is there anyone here? But, uh, sorry? Sorry. No one here looks like there's no one in the south. In the room right now? I don't think so. Um, no. We're all from the same club. Yeah, we're all, we're all from the same area. So, um, Phoenix still counts as south. But uh, keep going. 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 Keep here graphically or uh, on a calendar, if you want to look at it by time, you can see all the. Uh, you can look month to month. Oh, you can look month to month. You can go month to month. Because you, know, you can sanction a contest at any time. See, I don't know if they put ours in yet. We should have two. Yeah, we have to put our yeah. events together. Yeah, we have to put our events together. So we have to yeah. Oh, okay. So here you can go and find any meet in the country. <laughs> Now, likewise, uh, and actually you can look, <coughs> if you want to get involved and you want to know more about what the rules are, you can also go to the United States Model Rocket Sporting Code. Um, and this gives you all the rules, all the nitty gritty that I'm not going to get in today, into today because uh, I don't want to confuse people. But, uh, <laughs> You can go and look up all the rules for all the events in all the contests and rules lawyer to your heart's content. Yeah. So I found a contest. Now what do I do? I found something I want to go to. I want to have some fun. I want to fly some rockets against other people. The biggest thing that you can do is contact the contest director. So a lot of the information you'll find on our website It'll give you a lot of the information you don't need to know about the meet you're going to find. But the best single resource for any contest you're going to fly is the contest director. And most of them are more than willing to help out a competitor to get to know what they need to know to be there and have the best chance of success that they can have. Um, the biggest questions that you will need to ask um, will be the time and place. Obviously, you want to be there when everyone else is there. And you want to be where everybody else is. But the other big things are going to be like the field condition, how big is your field, and any uh, accoutrements, such as when we went to fly with Sarah from Nero, water and shade were pretty important accoutrements. So 
they will give you any special hints about the field conditions that you might need to know. And then otherwise, just get ready and choose the events you want to fly. Now, a lot of those big time competitors will tell you you need to fly everything. But really, just get out there and fly and have fun and fly what you want to fly. Um, and then build and prep your models. Now, uh, all of the contests are required to be on the NAR web page at least 21 days in advance. So you have at least that long to prepare. And usually you'll find that the bigger meets, the regionals, will be up long before that. So let's go through some tips for actually competing. Um, again, on the same tack of fly the events that you want to fly, fly the events that you will have fun in, fly what you know. And if you are going to try something new, make sure you try it at least a couple times before you go to that meet. Um, contest flying will introduce a whole new range of techniques over what um, sport flying is. And so uh, it takes a while to get used to them. And so you want to uh, try uh, the different events before you actually get to the competition. And um, on the same tack, a lot of the kids you might already have in your arsenal are competition legal. Um, for a lot of beginner competitors, the alpha is will qualify in as many as eight, I think I counted eight, but it might even be more than that events, enough to fortify the impulse classes if you're willing to put an Aerotech D in an alpha. <laughs> um, and it takes minimal modification to do it. So, um, you know, this is not exotic rocket science. Well, it is rocket science, but uh, so you, you can do competition, you can practice competition with minimal modification to your existing fleet. Yeah? Question scratching. Okay. Um, but in general, let's go back to those three questions again. So the, the first one we came up with was altitude. Um, now, altitude obviously is all about altitude. There are two really big tips for getting good results in altitude competition. And that's just drag and launch guidance. So you want to be going straight up, so you don't waste any of your energy going sideways. And you want to have a clean airframe. Um, so basically what that means is no extra glue. Um, and just treat it like you would a really nice smooth sport model. Make it look good and it'll usually fly good. Um, again with the launch guidance, just make sure it's going straight up and make sure you have a stiff launcher. Now I know a lot of us, when we start off flying model rockets, fly off the eighth inch launch rods. Let's be honest with ourselves, eighth inch launch rods don't always cut it. So <laughs> make sure you get your good stiff 3 16ths or quarter inch launch rod when you need it or even go if you guys have fly larger rockets, try a rail or try a launch tower. Uh, now, for co uh, duration competition, again, you want to keep it in the air as long as you can. And there are, again, two big components to duration competition. It doesn't need to look as pretty as an altitude model, but it does need to be light. Every gram of weight you save will get you more time. Um, and on that same tack, just weight everything as you're building it, if you're going for minimum weight. But ultimately, the goal in duration competition is consistency. Um, because it is the sum of two or three flights, um, most everything you do is going to be about two or three flights, not just one amazing Hail Mary flight. So. Um, more, more often than not, consistency over absolute time will win a duration competition for you. Um, which comes right back again around that general tip, practice. Parachutes are harder to open than people think. <laughs> and then finally, scale, which uh, most people fly here, which is where you can fly the big rockets and have fun with that as much as the little rockets. But with scale, it's competition, but have fun. Pick something you like and do something maybe mostly within your skill set with maybe one or two things to push yourself on. Um, the model here, uh, the gentleman who built this model is a very long time sport flyer. 
Um, and he started flying competition not too long ago with these models. Well, all he flew was pretty much eight powered mid mid size model or uh, mid power rockets, and that is a G power mid power rocket. So he's very much within his skill set, and he just did it and did it very well. Um, and again, here we go again. Practice, 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 and more missions, and we'll get. Um, Basically, with a scale model, the more fanciness you can make it do, the more function you have. So staging, clustering, gliding, the more points you get. But the more difficult it is to get all those points. Um, so you don't have to make them all look pretty. You just have to make one that looks pretty. And um, you can practice all your missions ahead of time. What's a boilerplate? Um, a boilerplate, the, the, the term comes from the, uh, the original Mercury test vehicles. Uh, basically, they said they were made out of the plates off of boilers, just to have something that weighed a lot and that looked kind of like what the real thing would look like. But it's not necessarily the fully functional, or in our case, in our practice, the pretty looking, I'm going to take it and put it in a museum model. It's going to be bare cardboard with balsa, bare balsa wood fins just to make sure it flies right. So you get all this, you get really excited about going to competition, you practice a couple of events, and you find there's no contest in my area. And right now, this is kind of something NAR is looking at expanding on. So you might think it's difficult, but you can indeed host your own. This is all you need, really, to host your own contest, besides pen and paper. You need a field, you need stopwatches, and you need a <coughs> And the minimum personnel is the contest director, which in this case will end up being you and two other NAR members. That's it. So, pick your events. As I said, there are 37 recognized NAR competition events and 10 impulse classes, and this is all of them in a chart right here. Excuse me. And you pick two or three that you like. You get two or three of your friends that you may or may not like. <laughs> um, brother and, sister. and you go out to the field and you fly and you have fun. But once you pick the events that you like and you want to fly, you submit a sanction. And that's that form there, but it's real simple. Tell me what date, what events you want to fly, and give me your contact info. And you send it to me via email or snail mail. Uh, and then you also submit your launch, the launch windows calendar, which we saw earlier. Um, and then I'll tell you, well, yeah, go fly your meat. Or I'll tell you, you know, you need to fix this, but still go fly your meat. Um, and then fly. Now, the, the, uh, one of the big sayings in science is the only difference between science and fooling around is writing it down. The only difference between sport model rocketry and contest model rocketry is writing it down. So, um, Time and track your rockets, write it down, and then at the end of the day, you can figure out who won. And again, it's who went the highest, who kept it in the air the longest, or who had the prettiest rocket. And then submit the results. Tell us how you did. Send the paper to your regional chairman. And that's, it is really that simple. Um, now what next? Now in each of these meets, you will accumulate contest points. And so eventually you could end up competing for national champion bragging rights. Um, one place you might want to attend to get a bigger idea of what this contest rocketry thing is all about, especially if you're in the area, is the uh, NAR annual meet. And this year it is in uh, Walnut Grove, Missouri, near Springfield, near 58, and it's being held by a consortium of the NAR sections in the area. So. Now, I went through that kind of fast, but there are a lot of resources out there if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of what this is involved in. Now, we already went over the uh, US Model Rocket Sporting Code there on the left. But there's also a, if you find again that there's no contest in your area, there's a contest director's guide. It tells you everything you need to know, more nitty gritty, more procedural about what you need to know to get into 
hosting model rocket leads. And let's go take a look at that. And you can find that also, funny enough, on the NAR website. Contest line. And the launch director's guide. Or contest director's guide right there. And again, this will tell you everything you need to know and uh, about hosting a NAR sanctioned model rocketry contest. Hey, it worked for me. In fact, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Me too. <laughs> So, and finally, for more information about how to actually build some of these rockets to meet these rules, the NAR has a pretty awesome uh, compilation of tips, tricks, hints, and articles available to all NAR members on the National Association of Rocketry website. And again, we can find that. Under contest flying, under the competition guy. Are all these places here on the web? They're all on the NAR.org website. And you get into them without being a member? Without being a member, yeah. Uh, like all of these, yeah, you don't have to be able to access any of this stuff. You don't have to log in. for all the different altitude, duration, and craftsmanship events, uh, and the couple that I didn't talk about, a couple of miscellaneous events. But So you can find all sorts of, there's, there's a generally a nice write-up, um, George Gassaway, Trip Barber, and a lot of other big time competitors, as we call them, have contributed a lot of very good writing uh, and tips and tricks to this website. Uh, and then there's also, uh, generally, um, uh, tips, tricks, and articles all you can find at the bottom. Um, a couple other resources, uh, you can find the Contest Rock mailing list, which is a uh, open forum, uh, as long as you have a Yahoo account, you can join it, um, and it is free to join. Uh, and you can ask questions and get, uh, hopefully get answers to your questions, eventually, um, from uh, people, or from big time competitors who compete all across this country. And likewise, the uh, Southwest region, hosts a uh, competition consortium website um, at that website there and also has a lot of tips and tricks available for new and old competitors alike. Do you have any questions about our contest rocketry? Is that your glider? That uh, might be my glider, yes. Maybe. Come on. What about Is it the okay? off with a half A? Half <laughs> <laughs> A? Yeah, it was amazing. We got off the other mile and glided for a while. Come on, you guys have got to have some questions. Yeah. Now, say you have a like a egg loft competition, it's like a seed egg loft. Is it? Is my understanding you could actually use two B two B engines? Um, that's a good question. So each impulse class, unless otherwise stated, um, can be. For any altitude event, you can stage or cluster as long as the total sum of the motors 
falls within the in loss class. Um, for duration, it usually has to stay in one piece, but you can still cluster to get into the impulse class. Excuse me. Yes. In duration events, you don't even have to use just one parachute. You can have multiple parachutes. Yeah. Or well, now you have to have one stream, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> but you can have more than one parachute. That's true. One goes straight down, one helps it right. stay in the air. Well, that's not true. They both do exactly the same thing. One dimension. So, yeah, parachute, you're going to have this big canopy up here uh, where you have a, you can't really see them, but in each one of these little tuckers yeah. in the parachute, yeah. there is a line there. Um, and they'll come down a little bit slower, but ultimately it's just drag. And then uh, streamers. Yeah, there it is. Attached by one line, it just kind of whips back and forth like a flag. Okay. It just says hello. It puts the hello on right here, coming down. Watch out. Now, uh, on the streamer, the right, you have only you're allowed to have only one connection point, right? Right. That's right. Now, can you see? Fold over the oh, now we're just rules lawyer. I thought this was supposed to be an introduction, not a rules lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> can I fold it over like this and make it like a V, you know? Uh, I don't say know. this is your streamer. Yeah. How would you fold it? I'm saying I fold it over like, let's see, you know, like yeah. a paper airplane. Yeah, yeah kind of like yeah. that, and then put my hole through here. That's, yes. Okay. It's a single connection. Yeah. yeah. What so you can't do is put a string here and a string here. Right. You can't. Yeah. You can't use what's a bridle. Like if you had a connected it here and here with a string, had it come down to a common point and then have the single line, you can't bridle it. Well, the streamer also has to be a rectangle, though. Well, it has to be it's a minimum of five to one five rectangle. Five to one. So I can take this one. edge of it and go around the string like this. Yep. Though. Yeah, you good. Sure. I, I can see not allowing somebody to connect a streamer like this, which would make right. an attack with power shoot. That's but the what's problem. the problem with the bridle on one end? It's just not the way the rules are written. Right. Yeah. So the rules yeah. are written. Exactly. Because, because one one. if you write the rule to uh, use more than one connection, then somebody's going to do that. <laughs> They're going to make a, a loop. You know. In international competition, they actually allow you to bridle a streamer. But we right. allow single point. It could be corner, it could be anywhere along. But short edge. Well, yeah, actually, it doesn't say right what edge. edge. Put a right oh. edge in I don't think it says what edge. Get the book. Come on, pull it up. Take a look. I'll this pull is, it up. This is the reason why we. This is the reason why the rule books are well, It might like say on the narrow middle. edge. I don't know why it would. Why it would care. But the streamer has to be five to one. Yeah, it has to be a right. That's right. That's right. Has to be a five to one. Can you just highlight right there in the middle? Could. Well, but the point is, uh, I think I see where he's going. The reason why it has to be on the narrow axis is this could attach thusly or up here. It could then start to do this as it's coming down, right? It could fold. Exactly what it will do. More than likely, and that's 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 not. That's not, not illegal. The streamer not and illegal. model must be connected by a single line or cord attached to the narrow end of the string. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So it does say narrow, so yeah, that's I'm good. pretty sure that was yeah, That sure. takes that question now. Hey, you cheat that one. No, you can't cheat that one. So, so you can't tie the streamer to the, or tie the shock cord to the middle of the string? No. Right. Wow. Oh. Has to be a narrow bit. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Has to be narrow yeah. Let's see. And so, but you can take. The shot cord around the streamer, and it'd be out like this. Or is that taking it? You know, because you get your. As long as there's. It basically, if there's one cord coming away from the streamer. Right? Well, yeah, but your cord, what if your cord, your streamer's that's like this, that's what I was and your cord's here, and you got your nose cone here, and your body tube down here. Yes. So yeah, you can, yeah, do, you can do that. Okay. Or, no, that's just two points. They have to come off yeah, the same side. Because it's two points, it's one on either edge of the streamer. Right, yeah. but uh, it's just yeah. bring it off, really, we bring it off one side. Put a hole yeah, in there correct. It, it can be at any point. A single just hole like anywhere one, along that narrow that, edge. That, basically, this is going to get you kind of a helicopter. One line has to come away from the streamer. No more than one line comes away from the okay. streamer. So we really shouldn't take the streamer to the uh, shot cord. 
Right. It should get its own Unless it's right the the score rocket to go and, and, and tape all the way around to the shock cord. That's normal. That's that's very normal. So you yes. wind up with an attachment like this. Right. So that's what I was wondering. So if yeah, you push that, that really the score rocket. Rocket. If you push that all the way up to the nose cone, there's a little one string coming off the streamer. More or less. It's no, it's, it's but it doesn't it, it, it doesn't meet the rule of a single point of attachment. Right. Because you've engaged actually you've engaged You're still the attaching it trailing to the edge. It doesn't doesn't meet the need. That's why I always make streamers. Mm -hmm. I always make streamers engage the entire trailing edge. Okay. But it can only have one cord coming out of competition. The other end won't be a cord, be the nose. Well, okay. It can only have one piece of the rocket coming out uh, at one point. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it's a cord or a solid piece. Right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, ask questions. Um, on scale competitions, what's usually the minimum? Um, you just have to have one picture that proves. It depends upon the event. Yeah. Uh, for there, there's basically two kinds of scale events. There's true scale, and then there's lookalike scale. For true scale, you have to have I think it's a minimum of ten dimensions, and there's a there's a certain list of which ones they have to be. Yeah, there's like a five required, and then you have to have five more of your choice. Um, but for sports scale, the lookalike scale, one color photograph at minimum. So I, the, the one and only competition I did, uh, I picked the, the best is the World Club B. Yeah. I had a heck of a time trying to find a good picture of that. You, know, you could find every other model, but the D, you know, it was hard to find anything. Like that. So that's what I'm thinking. The next time I do something, I'm going to look for the picture first. Yeah. To decide what, what <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's actually a good point that I, I didn't think of for scale. Is pick a model you like and make sure you get a photograph or a dimensional drawing of it. Um, a really, actually, I should mention this because he's here tonight. A great resource for those kinds of, for both dimensional and color data, is the Rockets of the World book. It is sold by the National Association of Rocketry Technical Services, uh, and it's by Peter Alway, who is here tonight. If you want to ask him questions about steel, <laughs> yeah, he's the NAR scale beard, that's for sure. Yeah. Any other questions? What's your favorite? My favorite event. That's my twin. Or glider. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It's gliding. RC glider. Well, it doesn't have to be radio control, but yeah, my glider. Just launch an RC helicopter in the air. There you go. It's gliding. Well, I guess it kind of technically is gliding. That'd be a helicopter. Or it's RC still gliding. RC plane then. That's a couple motors up to it. Well, that's basically <laughs> that's what that is. That's what that is. That's radio, that's radio control. Yeah. Do you have any other questions, Ed? No. <laughs> but honestly, it's that simple. Do it. Thank you. Yeah.